So there are a couple of pieces of news I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, one being that Epic Games invested in side effects and uh, the Blender got nodes for geometry, finally. So uh, let's unpack. There is a little bit to talk about each of these pieces and I just wanted to share my personal thoughts on the matter and get, you know, get your comments and suggestions and ideas on the topic in the comments as well. So let's have a discussion. Upon me just waking up and seeing this piece of news, I was like, wait a minute, is this really happening? And I had to double check and yes, apparently Epic Games invested in side effects. Now, there are a couple of things. First of all, they say that they are now a minority inv inv investor. And to my knowledge, you can be a minority investor if you own 49% of the company, right? Because I don't know, I think Epic has the money girth, so to speak, right? The just the amount of cash to outright buy side effects. And they could not because I guess the co-founders of side effects and Houdini, they possibly just refused to do that. Now, owning, maybe, maybe they now own, maybe Epic now owns 49% of side effects. I don't know. That's a minority stake. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of like me thinking out loud at this point, right? So I don't know. What, what do you think? Now, the problem, it's not the particular problem. Now, this piece of news rubs me the wrong way. Uh, honestly, it rubs me the wrong way for a reason which has to do with Blender because Epic previously supported the Blender Foundation with one or two million dollars investment. I don't remember exactly, but if I'm not mistaken, it was supposed to be kind of uh, they gave that amount of money uh, through the two or three years of development. And this investment in side effects might possibly mean for me personally, I don't know what you think about this, but I think uh, this might shift the focus of Epic Games and Unreal Engine development of plugins from Blender to side effects uh, Houdini, which kind of sounds fine, but the, man the matter of fact is that Blender is open source and it is freely available to everyone, whereas side effects is not open source. Um, and, you know, uh, to actually use the, at least the indie, you have to pay money for that. So that's a little bit of a kind of like, kind of like a thought I have in my, in the, in the back of my mind, because it seems to me that Epic might be signaling that they might uh, just stop, you know, bothering with Blender, because obviously Blender people do whatever they want. And I personally love what they're doing, right? Uh, but maybe investing in side effects, Epic thought that they could um, kind of be uh, more invested in the development of Houdini and plugins and everything else, like rendering engines or the PDG or KineFX, anything that has been developed by side effects, uh, which comes with Houdini packages or otherwise. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. Now, I'm saying this because previously Epic had a couple of games that was like the Unreal Tournament 4 or 5, whatever it was called, right? So that was supposed to be um, ongoing development and yada, yada, yada. But then they started developing Paragon. And uh, when, when they uh, converted their Fortnite from base building game to the battle royale and it, that became popular basically what happens is that they gave up on developing unreal tournament and paragon and despite the investment of millions of dollars previously in those two, two games they didn't care it just move on uh, moved on to fortnite so this is why i'm saying this rubs me the wrong way because they might just give up on developing for blender which is terrible in my personal opinion um, especially considering i'm not sure how houdini development will even you know fit in that but we'll see for now houdini is hell-bent on promoting their um, solaris the usd implementation and for me personally this is just not great for using as 
as like a small studio or solo indie developer or creator, whatever. So yeah, that's uh, that does not sound fantastic. I mean, I'm happy and all for Houdini, but um, I don't think it aligns all that much. Maybe they will realign their focus into the real-time development because for now, um, if you read my post in the in the community section, I don't know. Maybe someone has a better perspective. Maybe they have a better experience of using it, but. Every single time I'm using this implementation of current plugin, not version two, but version one, something crashes or something just bugs out or something doesn't save in the Unreal Engine. So that is a problem. Okay, next up, this weird of piece of uh, news out and we're gonna talk about Blender. Now, this is just, again, that was mind blowing. That was streamed on Monday or Tuesday, I'm not sure. So. As you can see, there is um, the latest stream f uh, was about geometry nodes. Pablo was showcasing the geometry nodes with delay. And from what I've seen, it's it's kind of like the, well, it's the future of Blender, right? So uh, let's dive a little bit deeper inside of the nodal system of Blender and see what they got. So I will just uh, copy these links in the description below so you can read yourself and see uh, what do they have so anyway uh, let's see what do they have now there is there is like a november 9 blog post about this notes modifier part one sprite so basically they're working on a new production that is called uh what is, what is it called sprite for sprite fright right and uh, they are currently uh, in the first sprint i think or whatever they call it, uh, yeah, the initial sprint from October 19th to 30th. Uh, possibly they have the second sprint right now. So what does this mean? It means that they are creating the design and they outline how the nodal system will be developed. Now from, from what they have showed us uh, already, it kind of really does look like, um, whoops, uh, whoa. It kind of looks like almost like um, the nodes nodes from Houdini using some sort of implementation of VOPs. Uh, let me explain a little bit. Uh, so the first image is saying pebble scattering. As you can see, uh, we have the modifier input, geometry, object, uh, density, and angle. And as you can see that uh, somehow they're going the distribution, rotation, and scale. They're going into the... Um, so the object goes into the instancer and the modifier output is what would be scattering. So it's kind of like uh, copy to points in Houdini if you use that one. But however, uh, kind of weird that they are uh, doing the distribution, rotation, and scale through the geometry and not through the point scattering, which kind of uh, is a little bit strange to think about it. Uh, maybe they are just you know, maybe they will improve it somehow, but I I actually do not see input from anything else. So the angle comes from the angle, and apparently I think this angle can be and should be controlled by uh, vector information, for example, from the noise, as we do this in VOPs. Now, next up, random rotation node. Uh, apparently it's um, it possibly is the node for um, just a standalone node that can... Uh, creates a randomization of the rotation. Now, again, the output is geometry, and I guess this geometry is that you are actually working on. Now, then you add attributes, and uh, the group input somehow has a rotation maximum that gets into the end. So th the current situation that is being outlined is that you work not... Uh, you kind of work, as we see here, uh, points of scatter are being assumed as initial geometry. So you would think of this in if you were to work again in Houdini, if you come in just from the blender, you know, skip this part, this whatever, if you don't get it, it's fine. Uh, for someone who's using Houdini, I think that um, they assume that geometry is already copied on the points. Uh, therefore, we don't have another input for actual scatter. You would assume that you are already scattering this thing 
upon copying. I, I hope that makes sense, right? You do not copy, uh, you do not um, tweak the attributes upon the cop uh, upon the points and then copy on them, but you actually assume that those points are already copied with the geometry and then you manipulate geometry. I'm not sure how that will work with instantiation though. I hope they keep that in mind, right? Otherwise it will just be lagging horribly, but I think they're not stupid. Maybe it's just an oversimplification of how the nodal system works. Finally, we have the trees and flowers. And this is interesting because it kind of uh, works a little bit more like the attribute fob from Houdini. Uh, so what we have is the texture and I'm assuming that the texture can be inherited or read from the noise that you can kind of, as if it was a shader, go and overlay over your geometry. Then they go through the color ramp. This is exactly what we were doing in attribute fob. And so we create the attribute of the scale, right? As you can see. And we then do a little bit of math. And using that, we then copy the trees and flowers. So basically we do a little bit of different scaling uh, on the copies. And then there we have the point instancer. So which is apparently a node that will be in the right sidebar if you're using the default layout of Blender. So all of that, all of that is really, really inspiring. Although, again, I'm saying this with a caveat that, man, I'm, I'm not, I don't know, I'm, I have not kind of wrapped around my head around the news about how, well, Epic invested in side effects. I mean, seeing how Blender now will have nodes and next year, I think Blender 3.0, will be more or less have the foundation for nodal systems in place. It's kind of like it stings a little bit, doesn't it? I'm not sure. Maybe it's just me, uh, you know, feeling this. Maybe you feel this the same as I do. I don't know. Let me know. So that was like, you know, just a couple of news, uh, nothing. It's kind of like your morning coffee me talking about things, right, about the news. So, um, yeah, generally speaking, let's just get excited about the Blender, the Blender notes. And obviously, yeah, like I said, I will be posting the link and you can read a little bit more about this, but I think I explained it. Uh, well, I, actually, I think I explained it horribly. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's just me rambling at this point. Thanks for watching and see you next videos. Bye-bye.